Hello and welcome to NIMS and Associates Acumatica Snapshots on Acumatica Contracts. Our agenda is to cover what the contract module does in Acumatica. Contract module in Acumatica is part of the finance system. It's a way of recording customer recurring revenue. Contracts in Acumatica are great for software recurring revenue or annual support agreements or customer contracts that are based on cases or on hours billable. Customer contracts are created with contract templates. Templates get applied to customer and the contract gets taken off hold and activated. The contracts are great for maintenance contracts and software recurring revenue, great for managing the renewal process for contracts and to upgrade contracts. And it's got tight integration with the CRM system. So you can link cases and support tickets from CRM to the contract. The two major elements of a customer contract are customer contract templates and customer contract items. Contract templates and contract items get applied to a contract to make it eligible and functional. Customer contracts and contract templates. The Acumatica contract management system has a workspace all of its own. When clicking on the contract management workspace, it exposes all the elements of contract management. The major components of contract management are going to be contract templates, non-stock items, and ultimately customer contracts. Customer contracts get billed periodically and upon a renewal date being reached, can be automatically renewed. Customer contract template is a way of setting up a template that can be applied to contracts. The setup of the templates is important. There are certain settings in the templates that determine whether or not contracts can be billed for time or for events. So if we look at an on-demand customer billing, we'll go through the various elements. The contract type is either renewable, expiring, or unlimited. Renewable means that it's going to be renewed. It will expire and can be renewed. Expiring means that it's going to be expiring after a certain date and will not be renewed. Unlimited means that there's going to be just unlimited time on the contract and no renewal will apply. In the case of an unlimited, that is useful for kind of tracking time and material that might be built to it. In the case of a renewable, certain fields open up. So for example, you can say that the contract is going to be a year, quarter, month, or custom. In this case, we'll select year. We can tell the system that on a renewable contract, how many days before the expiration date do we want to kind of be notified to trigger communications with the customer? I'm going to say 30 days before the expiration date. And we're going to allow a grace period for the customer, 30 days. You can see that there's effectivity dates for the contract. The billing period is on demand in this case. When the billing period is on demand, you can generate an invoice for the customer at any time you like. Other options for billing are weekly, monthly, quarterly, half year, and year. Who is the bill going to? It's going to be going to a customer account. When the customer contract is actually created, we'll assign the customer at that point. The invoice description is a formula that allows us to define what description shows up on the invoice. When billing is generated for contracts, the invoices end up as accounts receivable invoices. The invoice description and the line description are formulas that tell the system how the AR invoice is going to look. On contract templates, you can add template items. Template items are a type of non-stock item specifically for contracts. So for example, this is a deposit item code. Let's take a look. In a deposit item code, we're telling it 
how much of a deposit we're going to get at the start of a contract. We're setting this up as a deposit. And then there's other information that allows the system to know what general ledger accounts as opposed to. Another example of a inventory item that's a contract item could be a recurring charge. If we look at the recurring charge item, we're saying that every time we run billing, we're going to charge $100. Once a contract template is created, they can easily be applied when we're creating contracts. Customer contracts are where you set up the events that actually get billed. So I'm setting up a new contract ID, which gets applied to a customer. On the contract, I select a contract template contract template will define some of the defaults for the contract and help us in setting it up. I define the date the contract set up, a date that it will be activated on, an expiration date, if applicable. If there's a bill to location for the customer, I can set that up, and then I can set up the renewal and grace periods. Uh, for the details, I can set up individual items that can be recurring in nature and set up the dollar values that will be charged on a recurring nature. In this case, I'm going to be using a no items because I'm going to be billing time on customer contract. If you wanted to bill periodically and not bill according to time, you could select a different template. In this case, I've created a software template and this is telling me that every time I run billing, I'm going to charge $5,000 for the base product and $2,000 for an add-on. Customer contract tells us what's going to be recurring. Any employee overrides are used for charging different rates according to who the employee is. I'll give you a history of the contract. History of the contract could include when the contract was created and renewals. A history of any invoices that were generated from the contract. And if you care to, you could have attributes describing further unique aspects of the contract. Notes, activities, files all apply to the customer contract as well. When the contract is ready to go, I tell it to set up as a contract, tell it what date I'm going to make it active as of and then I activate the contract. An active contract is ready to be built. Running recurring revenue. To run recurring revenue, select the run contract billing from the process menu. You can run billing for all contracts that are eligible to be billed. You can change the date to determine the eligibility for billing. You can select process to select just one or a handful that you'd like to select. So in this case, I'm just going to select one. Invoices that are generated from run contract billing end up in the receivable system as invoices. These invoices can be edited. They can be deleted or they can be released. Contract renewals. Periodically, you're going to want to go into the system and renew contracts. Renew contracts are contracts that are approaching their expiration date. Upon entering the renew contract screen, a list of contracts that need to be renewed appear. You can select a date to renew them as of and select one or more or all contracts to renew. Billing for time usage on contracts. In contract templates, it's determined whether or not a template and therefore a contract is going to be billable or not. If you're selecting a contract that is going to be billable, 
That allows for the unique ability of Acumatica's CRM system and time recording system to interact with contracts and contract templates. Acumatica has a robust CRM system. In the Acumatica CRM system, there's an option for support. Support is where cases can be created. Cases in Acumatica language parlance is an event that is either billable or non-billable, but can be applied against a contract. In this case, I'm creating a case for our customer, Al Kabar. Detailed notes on the support incident can be entered in. Additional information, including a location and a contact, can be added. In this case, I'm going to assign this to a contract. This case is now associated with that contract and will be billable against the contract. To record time against the case, there's a couple of different ways you can do that. One is that you can just enter the time in here, billable time and billable overtime. The other way that you can do that is you can set up what's called an activity. Activities can be created against cases. In this case, I'm gonna create a work item type activity. A summary description is required. I need to say how much total time has been spent and how much of that total time is gonna be billed. I can put in notes about the work that was actually done. And I can close out of my activity. The total of all activities on this case will show as billable amounts here once these activities have been released. To release an activity, you can tell it that it's complete, and that will update the time on the case. When a case has accumulated billable time, you can close the case. and release the case for billing. The next time the contract is run for billing, it will include these two hours of billable time. Another way for employees to book time against cases is to have employees fill out time cards. So time cards and time activities can be filled out in Agumatica. In this case, I'm filling out a time card for this week. I can charge it to a task, and I can charge it to a case. Now in this case, my task is linked to a case, so I'm gonna support, select my task, and we're gonna put in the, the amount of time spent, and then I can adjust the billable time as well. In this way, an employee can put in all their time on one screen at one time. Thank you for watching our Acumatica snapshot. If you enjoyed this snapshot, like, share, and subscribe. Thank you.